Colonel Vindman, we, we've had some discussion uh, earlier today and also at your deposition about whether the president had a demand for President Zelensky. Um, and, you know, I suggested to you in the deposition that the president's words are, in fact, ambiguous. And, and he, uses, he uses some phrases that um, certainly could be uh, characterized uh, as hedging. On page three, in, in the first paragraph, he talks about whatever you can do. He talks about if that's possible. Um, on page four, um, he, he mentions if you could speak to him. Um, he's talking about the attorney general, um, or Rudy Giuliani. And, and then at, at the end of the first paragraph on page four, he says, whatever you can do. The president also says, you know, if you can look into it. And, and, and I asked you during your deposition whether you saw or acknowledged the fact that certain people could read that to be ambiguous. And I said, correct, yes. And I believe you said, I, I think people want to hear what they have already preconceived. Is that what you testified? Actually, if I could ask for just a page site. 256. 256 yeah. and a line. Thank you. Just a minute, please. And just a minute. Okay, we got the page. Okay, and, and then you went on to say, yeah, you, you agreed with me. You said, yeah, I guess you could interpret it different ways. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, Ms. Williams, I, I want to um, turn to you for a moment. Um, and you testified that you believe the transcript is, is complete and accurate, other than the one um, issue you mentioned? Yeah, substantively, substantively accurate, yes. Um, now, did you express any concerns to anyone in your office about what you heard on the call? My supervisor was in listening on the call as well. So because he had heard the same information, I did not feel a need to have a further conversation with him about it. And you never had any concerns with anyone else in the vice president's office? I did not discuss the call further with anyone okay. in the vice president's office. Okay. So you didn't flag it for the chief of staff or, or the vice president's counsel or anyone of that sort? Again, my, my immediate supervisor, Lieutenant General Kellogg, was in the room with me. Right. So. And after the call, did you and General Kellogg ever discuss the contents of the call? We did not. No. <laughs> okay. Now, in the run-up to the meeting in Warsaw, the, the Vice President was meeting with President Zelensky September 1st in Warsaw. You were involved with the preparation of the Vice President's briefing materials? I was. Um, and did you flag for the Vice President this, uh, this you know, parts of the call that, that had concerned you? No, we did not include the call transcript in the trip briefing book. We don't normally include previous calls in trip briefing books. Right. So I'm just wondering if the, if the concerns were so significant, um, how come nobody on the vice president's staff at least alerted him to, to the issue that President Zelensky might be on edge about something that had been mentioned on the 725 call? Again, my, my supervisor had been in the call with me. Um, and I ensured that the vice president had access to the transcript uh, in, in the moment on that day. As we were preparing for the September meeting with President Zelensky, the more immediate issue on, at hand was two days prior, the news had broke, broken about the hold on the security assistance. So we were much more focused on the discussion that was likely to occur about the hold on security assistance for that meeting. And to your recollection, you were in the meeting with President Zelensky and Vice President Pence? I was. And Burisma didn't come up, or the Bidens, or no. any of these investigations? No, it okay. did not. Um, 